Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish lock there. We're up north, aren't we? Yep. This is, uh, this is an unusual weekend for us. We are up north, we are just up north of Manchester. We're in Heaton Park, James and I, this morning. And we've come up here because Hannah, James's mum, my wife, Mrs. Fishlocker, is competing. Hannah is, uh, a hobby of hers is bikini modelling. And she's in a bikini modelling contest. We might sneak a little bit of that footage in later on. But James and I, Hannah is off to go and get her second coat of fake tan. James and I have taken this opportunity to go and try and find some geocaches. Now one of our recent camping videos, van camping videos, James and I accidentally stumbled upon a geocache. That was our first experience of geocaching. Since then we have had great fun finding all the local ones to us and every single time that we go away anywhere, even if it's just in the car and we're stopping off at a, a welcome break or a, or a restroom, looking for geocaches in the area. Heaton Park, I will try and put a little bit of screen recorded footage because what I've got is I've got an app on my phone. It's simple and free to download and if you can see that there, it shows you your position and all these little dots around here are all geocaches. So the nearest one to us is called Wrighty's Heaton Park Trail number five tram shed. I am going to show you the exact locations but I might show you some of them because they are quite interesting. Uh, we've had quite a lot of fun doing this. We will show you anything else that we find that's quite interesting on the way. We've seen some rabbits already haven't we? Yeah. Jim thought it was quite amazing that there was rabbits in the middle of Manchester. Why not? And everything else? It's a lovely, well, <laughs> it's a lovely mix day. Depending on which way you look, if you look this way, it looks lovely. If you look that way behind them trees there's a lot of rain clouds. So we'll see how it goes. We drove the, ended up being more like five hours last night because of all the road closures. But yeah, we are staying at a lovely Premier Inn and enjoying a little bit of what Manchester's Heaton Park has got to offer. Now you can tell, you've been teaching me about these flowers, haven't you? Yeah. You know what all of these are called. Yeah. What are these ones? Clovers. Clovers, yes. Buttercups. Buttercups. And what about these ones? These ones are quite a funny name, aren't they? Yeah. Do you remember what these are called? Bird's foot trefoil. Bird's foot trefoil. Bird's foot trefoil, yeah, he's absolutely right. Yeah, there's all sorts. We will, um, as we find new things, I will point them out to you. But yeah, James has been teaching me all about it. Amazing. These tall pink flowers here, in areas like this, we're, we're, we're next to a lake. Areas of marshy, boggy land. So like next to a canal, next to a river, next to a pond, in a marsh, in a, in a bog. The, the ground is quite wet underfoot. You do get a couple of three different types of flowers, these tall pink ones. Greater willow herb, rose bay willow herb, or balsam, Himalayan balsam. Right, these ones growing here are the balsam. They aren't out yet. They're quite interesting because when their seeds are ready to pop, if you go anywhere near them, they explode and they fire their seeds everywhere. These, great willow herb, these pink ones. You get some other ones that have got, um, how should you think of it? It's a, it's a straight stalk with flowers on every side and they're long and thin and they're pink. That's rose bay willow herb. And these ones over here are yellow loose strife. Now these are stunning. I remember we had those in our garden growing up. I don't know when my mum got them. <laughs> There was quite a few plants in there that as I've travelled across the UK as I've got older, I've kind of thought, oh yeah, my mum had them in her garden. And then I found out that they holidayed there as a kid and they probably took some back with them. But yeah, this is gorgeous. It's called Yellow Loose Strife. And there's more of the greater willow herb there. When I've gone through, I will put the proper names and the Latin names of these flowers in there because sometimes people have said that they can't quite understand what my accent's saying. <laughs> So I'll put them in there to avoid any confusion. Let's go and see what we can find. I think we might even find some bird's nests today. See what else we can spot out. James has been showing me butterflies. And you've even, James has got a phone that he uses and he's got an app on his phone where it shows dinosaurs, doesn't it? Yeah. Through the camera you look around and it shows dinosaurs hiding in bushes and things like that. So we're out getting some fresh air. We're going to enjoy ourselves looking for some, some bugs, some animals, some birds, some flowers 
and some geocaches. This is the balsam that I was talking about, the Himalayan balsam. The flower almost looks like a snapdragon. But like I say, when it's, when it's finished, when it's ready to seed, the seed pods, when they're ready to go, if you walk past them and cause any type of disturbance, they explode and fire the seeds everywhere. Which way should we go, Jim? Should we go this way or should we go this way? This way? What have you found there? Found a brontosaurus, have you? The app overlays really well onto a satellite map, with us being the blue dot in the centre. Zooming in and selecting the nearest geocache, you can get its information. Amongst the information about the cache is a hint and where it is located. A log in a log. Right, I've managed to get the dinosaurs to go in his pocket for a bit, and James is directing us. So when we are on the map there, yeah. whereabouts is it going to be here? Are we going to be down this way, or are we going to be down this way? Right, James has found some absolutely stunning early purple orchids there. Look at that one. That is a beauty. Not an awful lot of scent to them. But yeah, there's three, four. There's another one. You can hear a wren singing in the background. I've always got a fantastic song on them, wrens. Right, James. How close are we? What are we looking for? Are you going to lead us in the right path? On this app, there are, you can search for certain things. I mean, they'll, they'll be a lot long, so if you've got a GPS, so you can search for a lot long, you can pretty much stand on it. Oh, yeah. A little tram, we'll have a look at that in a bit. Find this geocache first. Yeah, you can, you can have a look. There'll be hints, there'll be tips. Sometimes there's a puzzle to solve. There's one of them in another area of this park where I sat for an hour this morning doing a jigsaw, a 260 piece jigsaw, to be able to find the lat long coordinates of where this geocache is. So hopefully after all that work, we're gonna be able to find that one later as well. Right, we're not, we've not walked past it, have we? No. Right, good, we're still walking up to it. James, which direction are we walking? Um, that way. Right, we've gone past it, haven't we? So we need to oh. go back and go that way. Yeah. So it's over there somewhere. Near the tram station. Let's go. We have the first log of the day. It was a little container and inside of it, inside a little sealed bag. 8 to the 8th, 19. All the way through. 31st of the 10th, 19. Let's see if we can find anywhere for us to write our names. I think we'll be able to find a little bit of space right at the bottom here to write our names. Then we'll seal it all back up, put it in this bag, put it in this container and leave it where it is. When you find a cache, you can enter that find into the app. Leave a personalised message for the other caches. Even add pictures. Then you're off to the next one. What have we got coming up here? Yeah. Bent's lame Bob Rules Ram. <laughs> Drink to that, eh? I didn't even know that was here. Got a load more of that balsam growing on the sides of here. And. These nettles are in flower. I was reading something this morning. I suffer from hay fever. I didn't used to when I was a kid. I've only started suffering with it in the past maybe five or six years. I was reading something about it and it's been that um, it was an old wives tale until a couple of people started trying it. And it was at this, as soon as the nettles come out in spring. Oh, James, a little rabbit in there then. As soon as the first nettles come out in spring, you sting yourself with some nettles and do it like once a week all the way through the summer you'll find that your your immune system primes itself against nettles because you're constantly getting stung 
and it kind of overlooks the pollen so you don't suffer with the hay fever because your body's worried about the nettles. I think I'll just stick to my puritan. <laughs> Not very nice nettles are they? No. Oh, it's like a different day now isn't it? Sun's out, we've got sweat on. <laughs> yeah. It's lovely up here. This way. James is a lot more enthusiastic when it's downhill. Right here. Yeah. What's that way? We all puffed out because we've been going up that hill. Yes. I can't give too much away about this one, but the basic clue was take a seat with X and Y and look underneath to the left. Underneath to the left. <laughs> Proper little treasure hunt. At the time of making this video, there were estimated to be 3 million active geocaches across the globe, hidden in around 191 different countries. Geocaching was started in May 2000. I wonder if anyone watching this has signed this log. That was quite funny there. We've just been sat down and I've just found that little cache and there was a couple come past and they were kind of like hanging round about maybe 20 yards away and I kept looking up at them. And we were just as I walked to leave, they come over and they went, have you found that cache? And I says, ah, yeah, so obviously, and they said, oh, we weren't sure whether or not you are a pair of muggles. Apparently that's like geocaching lingo for people that, that aren't aware of geocaching. I had a quick chat to him and I was like, oh, have you do much of this? And he was like, ah, oh, not really. I've only, I've, I'm on like 260 odd. I was like, yeah, we're on about 12. <laughs> so yeah, there's a whole hidden community that we didn't even know about, geocaches. James is enjoying his hard earned hula hoops. Yeah and run our way to find the next one. So yeah, mistaken for a couple of muggles. There are some stunning, stunning little pockets of woodland inside of this park. So it's even though you're only a couple of minutes outside the centre of Manchester, some cracking wild space. I don't know if you can keep hearing all the blackbirds singing as well. That balsam, that Him Himalayan balsam's everywhere up here. All these biggins on the side of here. You know what these are here, James? Yeah. Rhododendrons. They've been here that long now that they're almost considered as being native, but yeah, they are invasive. Come over, over from East Asia. Come over them, like, originally as an ornamental. James has complained that he's tired, so he wants to go and have a play in the park. That's logic for you, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> go on, let's go. Right, well, we've been on the play park. Yeah. I've got myself a pride ice cream. No. no. <laughs> there you go. James wanted one with sprinkles, and I have got a, a chocolocolet, chocolocolet, nick a block of glory. Try saying that three times fast. Yeah. Yeah, James feels like he's earned it. We had some dramas with the big slide. <laughs> James and I were busy walking along enjoying our ice creams. I was thinking, I'm sure I can hear some of it. Like tonight or something. <laughs> it's an apiary. It's about 40 hives of honeybees. All the way up inside of here. How cool is that? Dad? Look behind you. I'm not stupid enough to go raking about in there, but hey. A few million bees. This is something here, and I might end up being a little bit um, a little bit controversial in some of the things that I say. But you see all this that's on the floor here, all these strips, all of this everywhere. Now that destruction, that's not man-made. If you look up in the tree, see all these branches that have been stripped. All the damage that's been done to these trees has been done by grey squirrels. Now grey squirrels are invasive. 
they're from North America and they have pretty much wiped out red squirrels the native squirrels in all but a few locations in the UK now I feel that this should be controlled and uh, some people don't and then you just have to look at the destruction that they cause to, to trees to the buds to the news everything like this and they um, and they are an invasive species yeah. I don't know if you can see through there but but the pink flowers that are there at a distance they look a little bit like foxgloves like the digitalis but that's the rose bay rose bay willow herb <laughs> I, nearly said, I nearly said rose bay fire herb and it's not they're also called fireweed fireweed or rose bay willow herb if we can find some on this side of the fence i'll show you closer up but yeah that's not to be confused with the greater willow herb that we saw earlier on those ones have got like a poker of a flower Whereas these ones have got a bunch. All kind of the same, the all kind of the same. The Himalayan balsam, the Roseberry Willow Herb and the Great Willow Herb. They're all tall. They all have like well <laughs> they all have the same pink flowers. They're all tall, they all have pink flowers and they all live in like a marshy boggy area. Well, where are we off now? Better stick to the path. Let's get going. Got some little oaks. This one is a sweet chestnut. Not by the shape of the leaves. This is one of those male things where I will not look at the map. I won't look at the map. I know which direction I'm going. I will not look at the map. What is really lost? What if we're lost? Yeah. Then it really is an adventure. Then we only have to look at the map. Then we have to look at the map, yes. This damage here. Right, James, what do you think could have done that? Grey squirrel. Grey squirrel. I don't think it is a grey squirrel. That to me, when it's low down on a tree like that, either looks like it'll be rabbits or it'll be deers. It'll be deers using their antlers to scrape it, or it'll be rabbits after it. Now I am inclined to say deer. Deer or rabbits? Right, no, best point. Yeah. Keep your eyes peeled. Hmm, <gasps> what's done that? Oh, I think that's been a person that's cut them ones down. Uh, I love the imagination of kids. <laughs> just yeah there's loads of that rose bay willow herb up on there right it's gone a little bit high so james is going to do some narrating from up there aren't you yeah okay so you, you can take over <laughs> so what are we looking at so like there's like loads of butterflies out today isn't there dad? Yes there is, there's loads today. I've seen three different types of butterflies. What type of butterflies do you know? Uh, cabbage white. Cabbage white, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we've seen some red admirals. Yep. Yeah. And peacock butterflies. <laughs> and also some painted ladies. <laughs> right, do you know what these are called? No. Hogsweed. Weed. Yeah. Not to be confused with giant hogsweed, which is quite quite nasty if you get it on your skin because it can cause burns. Little oaks. Yeah. Do you know what these are called here? Not yet. You want me to have the camera? camera? Right. These here, we always knew them as mares tails, but they really are a prehistoric plant and the roots go down like feet, like massive distances. Of course there was, um, I can't remember exactly how I know the, know the information, but there was someone working on the railways when they were digging the, the sidings for the railways, digging into clay. We were finding the roots of a, oh there's a little damselfly. Finding the roots of them down like 10 feet. Right, it's incredible. We're still not looking at the map. 
We have faith. What did you see, James? That little blue one? Yeah. Little blue. I'm not sure if it was a dart or if it was a damselfly. You mean dragonfly? There's, there's different ones, James. Dragonflies are the big ones. The little ones are sometimes called darts or damselflies. Damselflies have uh, lights on their bottoms. They have lights? No, that's, that's glowworms. Fireflies. Close though. They're not very similar. Yeah, I'll tell you the best swim in the right. world. Snow worm. I had... <laughs> Did you just make a joke? No. The fastest worm in this... The fastest worm in the world? A snow worm. A slow worm. That's pretty good that. Right. I had noted earlier on that I hadn't actually seen any of this and I thought, oh, that's quite curious. Cuckoo spit. That there. Before. Now that is known as cuckoo spit, and actually there's the bug that lives in it. See it? Yeah. Put it back. Now it's not actually cuckoo spit, which is what gets called. It's actually a little bug that jumps. It's crazy at jumping, and that's the egg casings. But there's um, there's some other ones that I've just spotted. And they're called a burnet moth, like a six-spotted burnet moth. And they are lovely, they're, they're like uh, melanistic black with bright red spots. And I think I can see a pair of them over here. Can you see them yet? Yeah. There they are, look. I've changed the camera around so that you can better see these. Because they are stunning, aren't they? Six spotted burnet moths, and those two are making baby burnet moths. Sat on this bird's foot trefoil, and it sounds like over there somewhere there are some goldfinches. <laughs> this might be a clear example of uh, not knowing when to turn back. Yeah, I thought, oh yeah, it'll just be over here. I knew, I knew roughly what direction we're heading, and then we hit upon a wall. And I was like, yeah, it'll only be a small wall. And it's not a small wall. And then when I've jumped over it, it's a small wall and a fence. So what are we going to do? Adapt and overcome. Can you hold that, please? Oh. Right. <laughs> so we're going to walk along. Okay, and then jump down on the other side, aren't we? And try not to get impaled on this fence. See, these are the types of things that we don't tell James's mum. <laughs> well, we didn't die getting down off the wall. We're all right, weren't we? James has just pointed out something disturbing. He was like, "Oh no, a headless baby!" I was like, "What?" Was like, because that's not. Spooky at all. It's down. Yeah. <laughs> you just leave that there. <laughs> right, there is a geocache somewhere around here. We need to find it. Found it. Right, our circular route through Eaton Park is heading us back now. So it's quite strange having you on this side. <laughs> Our circular route leading us round Eaton Park is leading us back down here past a couple more caches on our way back to the hotel. And James and I were just speculating, we're just saying there must be loads of artistic people round here because there's just paintings everywhere, isn't there, James? Yeah. Yeah. You ready for some dinner now? Yes. After your ice cream? <laughs> People who are already familiar with the geocaching app, you'll probably already know this. I've just figured it out now. I've had to be, I've been using something where, I, whenever I've worked out coordinates for something, I've been using like Google Earth to look for the coordinates and I've been cross referencing it. I've just realised that in the app, I could change the coordinates of where it said the waypoint was to the new coordinates which I've just found and it'll give me a route to it. I'll do a little screenshot of it now into here. But yeah, that would have saved me loads of time. <laughs> Every day is a school day, yeah. 
We'll learn as we do it. But yeah, fingers crossed, we should have should have another what geocache coming up. <gasps> oh, I don't know what do you think it is. Let's just say we've suffered a few nettle stings from this one, but on the plus side, maybe my hair fever will go away for a month. In this, we'll get it signed and get put back. Yep. You reckon you'll be alright, cameraman? Uh, for a little bit. A bit of practice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Our next cache, the hint was, we're on that path up there. And below your feet, above the water drains, I look rather explosive, but don't worry, I'm safe. Well, I don't know, what can that be? What are we going to find in there, do you reckon, James? A bomb. Going to put it out? A grenade! A grenade? A grenade! A grenade! Well, be careful taking it out then, but... Oh! Ah! <laughs> it's not going to blow up. Yeah, a that grenade. Silly. A geocache grenade. Should we throw it so we can explode? <laughs> oh, it's a good job it wasn't going to explode because you chucking it on the floor would have blown it up. Right, I have to confess, I don't know an awful lot about this, but this might make sense to other people who are geocachers. Inside of this one, there was apparently a seven deadly ducks. That's Delta Delta One Whiskey Three Bravo. Wrath Trapcable Geocache. Let me run far, drop me at any geocaching event on 2816. I don't know what that means, so I'll leave it where it is. We've signed there. Collaboration hide between Hansu 666 and Tatscub Alpha Delabrod. We've signed that as well. We'll get it all put back together and put back. Yeah. For any of you, if you're in the comments here and you're geocachers and you know what that all means, please let us know because I'd be interested with that. All right, now that I've figured out that coordinates thing, this is loads simpler. It's done there. James is directing us where we're going, aren't you? So you're going to tell us where that point there. Yeah. And that's where we're going to. Yeah. And James is leading the way. So what could possibly go wrong, eh? Nothing, apparently. Whoa, whoa, oof. <laughs> James absolutely found this one all by himself. All I just said was, I just said, it's a camouflage cache near the base of the tree. And what have you found? Bring it here, then. Get hold of it. Now, are you sure that's it? Yes, look. Well done. Look at this. A camouflage cache at the base of a tree. Now, pull it out. Can you get it out? There it is in there. Ah, we've had a lovely little walk. Found nine different geocaches. I think we've probably done about three and a half mile. It'll, it'll be about four mile by the time we get back to the hotel. All around Heaton Park. Seen all sorts of bits and pieces, haven't we? Yeah. Time to go and get something to eat now. James has walked a long way, so I'm giving him a bit of carry. We're going to go and see what shade of brown your mum is. Because she's had her done. And there's Mrs. Fishlocker leading them out. Not the little one in blue. That's our friend Lucy. As the husband of one of these contestants, I can absolutely vouch for how much time, effort and dedication goes into looking like this. Right, our trip up to Manchester, our trip up north has come to an end. Hannah is still a very tanned colour from her competition. James, are you alright back there? Yeah. With your box of brownies and your car TV. We had a good time geocaching, didn't we? Found lots of northern geocaches. Roundabouts. You're women drivers. What did I do? Sorry. I hope you enjoyed joining us. Hannah, show us your hands. Turn left to merge onto the A556 <laughs> towards the M6. Have a good day. We'll see you later on.